I always wondered what the reading meant when Jesus said, Whoever loves me will keep my commandments, my word, and my Father will love him and come to him, and we will make our dwelling in him. But today, we, instead of in him, we say, we will make our dwelling in her. Yes, today we celebrate the feast, really, of your mother and my mother. And the best way to describe uh, about mothers is a picture I saw recently. I was at the Cromwell Inn or Diner or whatever it was, and there was a speaker there who took a picture of a baby and the mother, and the mother was having an operation and they, on the womb because there's an infection in the child. So the doctor began to uh, operate on the womb of the mother. And as he made his incision, all of a sudden a hand came out and took the finger of the doctor and held it on from inside the womb. And I think that picture really tells us what Jesus meant when he said, Father and I dwell in her. I saw the presence of God in that mother and I saw the presence of God in that child. As the child's hand came out of the womb after 21 weeks and took hold of the finger of the doctor. So the best way to me was through that moving picture what Jesus meant when we make our dwelling in you, mother and child. Yes, we ask ourselves on today's Mother's Day I'll tell you what, we won't have a collection if you tell me how many roses are there. Anybody know? <laughs> Debbie, how many roses? I bet you don't know. How many? Not exactly, maybe 600. 600. Sorry, we'll have three collections for that. <laughs> yes, she was right. We had 600 uh, red roses, but I gave 12 of the yellow roses of my, myself. So we have 612 <laughs> roses. And each rose represents a mother. And in the card, the book that you have, that Debbie did, all the names of the mothers who are represented with each one of those roses. And you notice each rose is at the foot of the altar. And every mother is at the foot of the altar, praising God with her child and children. Yes, when we talk about uh, a mother, we have to talk about the definition of love. Because the definition of love is a mother. And, uh, Love has different types of adjectives and nouns. A love is kind, so is a mother. Love is patient, so is a mother. Love never takes offense, so a mother never takes offense. I remember being in a chaplain at Sun Street Jail on the north end of Hartford, and I wanted to see a prisoner who just had killed his wife, and I was waiting to see him, and I started talking to a mother, and she said, my son's a good boy, Father. He made a mistake. Yes, love has never taken offense of your own child. But the other definition of love is sacrifice. And most people think of love as sex and feelings. But that's the icing on the cake. The eggs and the flour of the cake of love is sacrifice. And of all things, Today I baptized a baby and I went over to the house for some uh, lunch. I'll go anywhere for a free meal. And I, uh, I said, how many times were you up last night to the mother? She says, only three times to feed the baby. Yes, love is sacrifice. But another way of describing a mother and describing uh, love is two other words. Love is being attentive. Love is sharing your time. Time and attention is a definition of love, but that's the, one of the best definitions of a mother. She who gives all of her time to her children, all of her attention to the children. And I was sit, sitting there having some shrimp this afternoon. The mother ran out, the baby started crying. All of a sudden she dropped everything and went over to the child and gave her time and attention. Yes, today the Lord continues to give his time and attention to a mother. You know, God doesn't need a babysitter. 
No, he doesn't need a babysitter at all. Because he's always on call. From all eternity, God is always present to us. From all eternity, he's always on call. So he doesn't need a substitute. He doesn't need a babysitter for us. But he doesn't need a mother. Because the mother is always on, on call. Yes, she's always on call for her children. And to the degree that she is on call for a child, yes, to that degree, Christ is on call for their children. Yes, God is, doesn't need a babysitter. And a true mother doesn't need a babysitter because she's always on call for her child. And God continues to be his, have his presence in every child through the time and attention a mother gives. Because it's not only a mother's time and attention, it is God paying attention with eternal time, with, his, with the mother and through the mother. Recently we had two tragedies last week. One was the explosion at the Gulf of Mexico where the oil is still popping out and they're trying to drop that 100,000 ton of concrete to cover the uh, exit of all that oil. And Louisiana, many of the states are going to be affected, maybe for a long time. And yet the other tragedy was the stock market that dropped 950 or 60 points last week. And as that, they dropped, our blood pressure went up. And I got so much great, I had to cover my hair again after that, <laughs> that encounter. Uh, but those are two terrible uh, tragedies for us during the week. But yet, a year from now, those tragedies won't be there. But a year from now, a mother will be there. So the important thing is not the stock market. The important thing in God's eyes is not that accident, that explosion that took place. The important thing is a mother. Because a mother is love, and love is patient, love is kind. Love never takes offense. Love is sacrifice. Yes, when we look at uh, a child, your God will be my God, and, your, and I will be your God. There's a, a song that I like very much that kind of takes a, gives us an idea of what a mother is. And the song says, the song goes, wherever you go, I shall go. Did you ever watch a mother letting a child on a bus for the first time? When I had my uh, school at St. Stan's, I used to have boxes of Kleenexes all over the place. Not for the babies, not for the kids, but for the mother. Yes, wherever you go, I shall go. Even though she put them on the bus, she was going there with her child. Wherever you live, so shall I live. Because she shares the same life, the life she had, she shared with her own child. So wherever that child lives, in a way a mother still lives, through the life of that child. Not for the life of the child, but through the life of that child. Your people will be my people. Eventually that child grows up and gets married. And whatever family she or he enters into, that becomes the family of the mother. This afternoon I had such a beautiful experience. I was sitting there, and the, the dinner was five o'clock. If I had a brain, I'd be lonely. I got mm -hmm. there at three. Mm -hmm. And they're all sta standing there, and what are you doing here? Everybody else was sleeping, so I walk in. And I sat down, and uh, they, their father will give you something before you go to uh, the five o'clock mass. You can come back later. I said, no, let me have my shrimp now, so I won't have to eat all of it later on. So I sat down with the father, and he was feeding the baby that I just baptized. And it was Andrew Kim. Nguyen that I, I baptized, and they live in Farmington. And I was sitting there, and the father was uh, feeding the baby, and he said, you know, Father, I wish my mother-in-law could stay a little longer. She's so good, she's so kind. I really love her. Your people will be my people. Yes, his wife, Connie's mother, and Ty said to me, I wish you could stay a lot longer. Yes, and your God will be my God too. There's only one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons and one God. And the God that a mother loves will be the God of the, a child will love. Because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. 